What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us, thank you for checking us out. Please subscribe, do all the right things, promote this, tell everyone you know, it's the greatest thing I've ever heard. If it is, if it's not, just lie and say that anyway. It doesn't really matter to me. I want you to push the show around. Happy to be back. This week's guest is incredible. Kirill is the man who got kicked off of Instagram for being too naughty. Pretty incredible, man. I, I was happy to sit down and talk with him. I've known him for a while via the web, and I'm glad that we got to connect finally. Uh, right now, I'm in Vancouver. 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 Uh, Vancouver, Canada. British Columbia, eh? I'm up there doing JFL Northwest. Uh, come out and see me. We're doing one live Whiskey Ginger and two... I'm doing two-hour shows. So two one-hour-long sets and then one live Whiskey Ginger show. Uh, tickets are still available at andrewsantino.com. I think a few have been re-released, um, but they're pretty close to being sold out. But go to andrewsantino.com for all that information. Then next week, um, I'm going to be in Bakersfield, California, going up to Bakersfield, ma'am, to the Tembler Brewing Company, which is so dope. Uh, I've done this before, two shows. Uh, it's going to be great. And then the end of the month, February 28th and 29th, I'm going to be Detroit, D-Town, and then I'm going down to Atlanta, on the 29th. Of course, in March, I'm going to Philly, I'm going to Chicago, I'm going to Connecticut, I'm going to Cincinnati and Ohio, and then I'm gonna be in Houston for Skankfest. I just got announced that I'm gonna do a one-night show there um, in Houston uh, for Skankfest with all those troublemakers from New York. So for all this information, go to andrewsantino.com for the Red Rocket Tour. andrewsantino.com is the only place to get all that stuff, all the tickets. You can go for merch like this dope-ass Red Rocket hat. We have shirts, we have beanies, we have sweaters, we have all sorts of fun stuff. Also, the Patreon is there uh, at andrewsantino.com, or it's in the description below. Uh, the Patreon is going to have exclusive episodes that you cannot get here anymore. We're also doing one-on-one -on -one content with fans, um, and we're going to give them free special gifts. So it's pretty incredible. Uh, go to andrewsantino.com for dates, Patreon, merch, tour, all that good shit. But for now, yeah, now. Enjoy the episode. Whiskey Ginger is supported by Squarespace. Squarespace is an incredible place to go if you're trying to redesign, revamp, or start from scratch on a new website. They have, they have tons of templates that you can choose from. Um, it's extremely user-friendly. Of all the different uh, website creators that I've used, uh, Squarespace is, is probably the most efficient and, uh, and user-friendly that I've ever seen. Um, they have uh, so many different things that you can do on there other than just the templates that they provide. You can uh, publish your content almost immediately. You can sell products and goods and services. They show you how to do all that stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a new way to buy domains with over 200 extensions. Uh, they have incredible templates, like I said. They have powerful e-commerce functionality. It lets you do almost anything that you want online, whether you're an amateur or professional that's trying to get involved and get their new website up and running. I highly, highly recommend using Squarespace. We've used it ourselves. It is incredible. Um, if you're ready to get started in a new business and take everything to the next level and stop dreaming and make it happen, you really should use Squarespace. It's extremely efficient. So do yourself a favor and go to squarespace.com slash whiskey. You know the name of the show, squarespace.com slash whiskey. Use that promo code whiskey. Going to save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, you want to create a dope website for everyone to see your cool new idea or products use Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash whiskey. Use that promo code whiskey for 10% off. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again. Today, it is Karil, the slut whisperer, or not. We could, we could take that out, too. You can call me whatever. Cheers. But it's Karil. Karil. Yes. Karil. I said Kirill. it right. Yeah. Karil. But I gave it a There's little accent. I, dude, I grew Kirill. up with this name in America. It's been butchered. But Karil, but you were born in Russia, right? Mm-hmm. Born in Moscow? Moscow. I don't remember anything. I was six when I came here. Fully Yeah, you're American. Yeah. Like, I don't have too much pride for the motherland. Other than the fact that you guys got Trump elected, that was the dopest shit. You yeah, did. you're welcome. Thank you, dude. I'm saying I said thank you once. <laughs> I'll say it again, bro. Um, I'm already ready. You know, I can speak Russian. I'm ready for this. Can you? Yeah. But you said you were too young to remember. Yeah, but, your but I had to grow up in a Russian household. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. R so, like immigrant parents are like, you know, yeah, they, they, won't let they, that they, they fucking rule with an iron fist. Where did you move to when you came to America? Brooklyn and then Jersey. Brooklyn and, and then, then I Jersey. grew up in Jersey my whole life. And but like we were like a city family from Moscow. So like we, anytime we can go to Manhattan, it was like Manhattan straight to like Broadway shows. Comedy shows. That's all. Like my family was like very into culture. Ah, oh, there's like, so many things. But like you know, I don't know if they did it for real or just like fake to look like they were cultured. You don't. Th well, you don't think they really lo lo love that shit, or they were just. I kinda... don't know. My dad would bring a flask to the opera. I don't know if he was there for like the true like. That sounds almost. That's like the most American shit on earth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That He's like, I gotta be drunk American. for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not watching the fucking opera sober. Um, I have a million and one question. I'm I'm trying to get to like one first thought in my brain, but. I said Slop Whisper at the beginning. We said off camera, do we want to talk about it? You kind of iconically made a name for yourself on Instagram. Um, and in, in lack of a better way of kind of encompassing it, you are a comedian. You're a photographer. You're an entertainer. Uh, you are giving me way too much credit. Richard. Why not? What, what the fuck? You don't think so? Do you say funny a, shit online? Just, yeah. Do you take pictures? Yeah. Do you create? Yeah, but content? I, I think funny shit online doesn't make you a comedian. Well, I don't think you're a stand. I don't think you're in what, no. I, what we do. Right, right, right. But I, but I would give you credit for the fact that you put up funny shit on the internet. Right, but I do well, it without. But I do it without fear of bombing. So it's kind of like I have a really nice safety net because I go delete. Oh, okay. Right. Like you can't just like tell a bad joke and be like, but Mulligan. Right. right. Mulligan. Right. Can I do it again? Yeah, well, guys. I'm glad you. I'm. I'm not. I appreciate the respect, the recognition. But from my perspective, like, there's not comedians aren't just one avenue any anymore anyway. Uh, but you creating funny content to me makes you a comedian just as much as someone who writes a sketch, someone who, look, I mean, it's a vague term anyway, Right. but I do think what you make is good online. Now I first heard of you or saw of you when you, when you did a, an account called slut whisper on Instagram, right? Which is now dead. Dead. Tell me when it died. <sighs> uh, March 14th, 2020 on the 10 year anniversary of me, like. Oh, 2019. Jesus. 19, last year. Uh, on the 10-year anniversary of uh, me doing all of this. Like, it was weird. It was like a very surreal moment. It was about to be a decade. It was one it decade. It was literally a decade, and I'm like, fuck yeah, wow, this is kind of sad. 10 years of doing this is kind of like... Uh, and then all of a sudden, just it gets deleted. I'm like, well, okay, that's even what worse than fuck? I thought. They took uh, it away from you. On, they do, do you think they consciously knew? No, I think it was the fucking... There was like, you remember when Instagram, I, no one wants to hear about this, but yes, like, you remember do. when Instagram was like bugging out for like two days in Mar you don't remember it because nothing happened to you. I remember vividly. I was at a restaurant. Instagram was just like crashing, crashing, crashing all day with everyone. And then the next day, like account gone. And then I heard like a lot of people got wiped, a lot of bots. And I think they just kind of went like, Hey, we're cleaning house. Like it's official. Like, let's just like whatever new. I don't know how Instagram works, but I'm assuming. What did you, how, do, how do you think you got caught in the wake? I don't understand. What would have been your association with these fake accounts? Oh, I think I was just kind of like, maybe they just applied some sort of new like policy, right? Like, hey, if an account's had a thousand strikes, that's their new threshold as opposed to like 10,000 strikes. Sure. Who knows? Whatever it could have been. It's fucking crazy. We've talked to them and they've said like that like, Kirill, you have flags for like, like all for every single type of like thing you can imagine i'm like right literally all we do is just make offensive jokes on the internet and i show girls covered in champagne it's the internet yeah it's like what do you I'm gonna, you, what, I'm gonna sell you that right like sex and sex and funny, funny. yeah yeah that's what the internet is yeah. well i mean for people that don't know let me i'll catch up people up to speed so essentially slut whisper was a page um that that had photos video memes fucking of you you were going to parties, you were pouring champagne on boobs and mouths and butts, and you were getting girls to do wild shit, and you were putting up funny content. Right. It was just it was just kind it of was like basically, a, a stream it was like of a, fun consciousness. It was basically, I would give you whatever I was going through, whatever right. mood I'm in, right? right? If I'm like, you know, I don't do this anymore, but if I was coming down from Molly, let's just say, it's going to be a very depressing next day. I'll be posting some fucking, like, right. John Cena doing Make-A-Wish shit, right? Like, it'll be a lot of, like, and they'll be like, what is this, girl? I'm like, I don't know. This is just what I feel like. You don't have to follow. This is my online blog. It just happens to be on Instagram, right? right. It's just, like, I'm used to being a visual storyteller from just being a photographer and going to art school and all that shit. Where'd you go to art school? Uh, I dropped out of a shitty art school in Jersey. What was it called? The William Patterson University. Shout out to William Patterson, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was so bad. Who went so there bad, you know? The, me. Uh, <laughs> it was so bad uh, that, bro, this is a great story. Um, especially if you have a lot of comedy nerds listening to this. Hard. Oh, my God. So I was in college going for animation, graphic design, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, I would sneak out to go to the comedy cellar and hang out with comedians 
and uh, got tied up with uh, Bobby Kelly. So, Bobby Kelly, so dope. bro. So he's like, Kirill, we want to do this documentary. We're gonna film this shit at the cellar, and then we're gonna ship it to the troops in Iraq. Colin Quinn's gonna deliver it. We're getting everybody on this. Um, will you help film and edit it? Because I was like the little fucking AV kid. I was trying to do anything I could for comedians in New York. Uh, and we filmed this documentary, and they, you know, took. I lived on Bobby's couch for like six months. Wow! Like it, it was a really awesome experience, and I wasn't even. I was like 19 years old, freshman in college. Were you doing a pro bono? Were you just pro rock, bono? This was just yeah. exciting to be around, right. you know, people that I admired. So, so Bobby Kelly a, owes you some fucking money. That's what we're saying right now, right. Bobby. Mm. Pay up. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> so then we shipped it. It went off to the troops in Iraq, and I got thrown out of college. They're like, "You lost your full scholarship. Um, that's it." What You're for? Because uh, you flunked out. I didn't go. To, I didn't go. Yeah, to you class. Were I yeah, lived you were on Bobby's there. couch. Right. I was like, "Mom, I'm going to class," and then, like. Right. straight to Bobby Kelly's house in Manhattan. So then I'm like, all right, well, let me just try this Hail Mary. And I go to the dean of the art department. I'm like, so here's the thing. I'm, you know, you're taking away my scholarship, but let me try to get it back. Here's what I've been doing for six months. And he literally looks at it and goes, this is more important than anything we would have taught you. You can have your scholarship back. And then I got flunked out the next semester because I, <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, that worked. So yeah. let me just keep doing because that's way more important and way more fun. And it was just like, it was, I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. I'd rather learn from experience than have some fucking teacher teach me how to do Photoshop. You sure. Know? Well, I mean, it's funny because a lot of people that I work with that do graphic design and Photoshop and After Effects and stuff, a lot of them kind of taught themselves in a way, right? They learn a little bit from here then take from other people that they know. So those schools are kind of just an intro of structure to get you to, to a place where right. you... Right. Look, I'm you sure know. there's an amazing art teachers at amazing art schools. I just... Not at you William know, Patterson I was just like, or whatever. No, it was just like, it was good. It wasn't like, I'm glad I went there because it led me to this. Because if I went to a more serious animation or design program, I probably would have not found all of this. Yeah, you know? all the shit that you're doing yeah. now. So then after you after you were flunking out of school, you did you really want to get into photography? Was that a real thing? Or no. was that kind of an excuse to like No, I never even thought about it. I took one photo class in like high school. I never thought about photography once in my life. Uh. I got a job at Caroline's Comedy Club because I needed money because I was like, I flunked out of college. I'm an embarrassment of my family. It's like the right. first child in a, an immigrant household to not go to college. Like, can you Ugh. imagine that? Russian Jews. Like, my mom almost had a heart attack. Uh, she still cries about the fact that I don't have a college diploma. But still? I, still. You can have mine. So, Arizona State Journalism, it'll get you fucking nowhere. She'll be more disappointed. Arizona State anything. She'll be the more disappointed. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, well, this is exactly what I knew you would do. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm waiting for my honorary degree one day. But uh, I just started working at Caroline's. Had a shit job, like shit pay, but it was so much, not shit job, but it was like fun as fuck to work with comedians. And we had a camera there. And I would just take photos of comedians for fun. That's wild. Yeah. Who did you take pictures of that you really, really admired? Was there somebody that you were like, fuck, I love that comic? Um, there's photo. one moment I dude I was there every night because I made no money so I ate comedy club food for breakfast lunch and dinner Barf. and then had to like take the train back to New Jersey so I I was pissed broke so I would see everybody and then one weekend I missed Robin Williams dropped in for Jeff Garland and I was like are you fucking Fuck. kidding me I was like really yeah yeah you can but still I got catch to see him. everyone you can still catch him now he's still around I think right hey. he's moving around town oh, still. he's hanging in there he's hanging in Whoa. there uh <laughs> Yeah, you fucking, yeah, you blew it. You blew it on that of all the shitty yeah, fucking comics that, was, that you yeah. see. I saw a lot of dog shit comics too. And they're like, take a picture of this fucking clown. Who was the guy that you took a picture of that you didn't really like that they made you take photos of? They didn't make me do anything. Oh, I, they didn't. I, they didn't care. I was what just, was your job then at Caroline's? Uh, graphic designer. Like, so they were like I, would you make were just a, I would just make playbills. My job was to make my job sound more complicated than it was so I couldn't get fired. Right. Right. Like, I used to go in and overcomplicate things because I was way too proficient of a graphic designer for a comedy club. Right. Like, the guy before me, like, used, like, you know, like paint to make shit. And I brought right. in Photoshop and I made it so overly complicated, but it was done right so that nobody could ever replace me. Right. right. Like, if I had a sick day, they were like, Oh shit, we can't do this without Kirill, huh? Like it was one of those kind of like funny. I always try to make myself. But that's what unfireable. comedy comedy clubs for the most part, like they're just so run so inefficiently. It's it's remarkable. A lot of times, not all clubs, a lot of clubs are great, but so right. many clubs are run like fucking restaurants. I mean, I they can run tell them like you a chili's, you know? When I worked at Caroline's, all I wanted to do was own a comedy club. 
And when I worked at comics, I don't know if you've ever heard of comics. Yeah, I know here. comics, yeah. All I wanted to do was never own a comic. For sure. Show. Well, yeah. yeah, that's a very obvious... For inside baseball people, that's a very, like, uh, right, like specifically that, obvious reference over why you... Right, right, right. I was like, oh, again. okay, this sounds like a nightmare. This it looks is. like a nightmare. It is. Well, a lot yeah. of the people that work in fucking comedy clubs that work in restaurant management, these parallel things that they try to... They're trying to make money off of selling chicken wings and beer some places. Some places take a lot of pride in comedy, right? Right. I just did Comedy Works in Denver. It's one of my favorite clubs in the fucking world. They take a, an unbelievable amount of pride in comedy. I'm not going to fucking badmouth and shit on some of the places that I should that take no pride, but fuck them. They know who they are. They're trash. They right. take no pride in comedy. It doesn't matter. You're just a cunt that comes in. They're trying to sell a, a half a dozen wings per table and six beers. And Do you experience that on the road a lot? I don't anymore. Right. But, but like, was, you do. there was at a, a period, point in your right. career. Every comedian on fucking earth experiences that. I feel like I have a road life of a comic. I was just going to say, you're, you're like, the parallel I've, that you have. I don't experience anything in each city. I show up, I see a hotel room, I go to the party, I go to the hotel room, and I get the fuck you go out. Home. Yeah, I don't not... Uh, for for reference to people that don't know, like, now you get paid to show up to a party to kind of be a liaison of fun, an ambassador of fucking right. fun. What I kind of like... What would be like the, what's a contract say? Two hours. That's it just it. says, Kirill, two hours. <laughs> That's it. Champ how many, what's your rider? Do you have a rider uh, yeah, of champagne? What yeah, is it? What's I have your like rider? 48 bottles of champagne, uh, three bottles of Patron, a bottle of Gregos, a bottle of whiskey, a bottle of Hennessy, uh, mixer, you know, all the shit, and then like a whole rider of props that they have to get. What are the fucking props? Oh, there's, well, there's a huge list and they have to choose like 10. Because, like, every club just gets, like you said, there's some clubs that are like, whatever, like, we're just using Krill to get bodies in the door. We're not going to adhere to the rider. And yeah. when I show up and it's not there, what am I supposed to walk out? I just look like a dickhead, right? So, like, there's some places where you go, you're like, oh, they didn't get anything. Like, right. I have to fight for, like, a bottle of vodka. Uh, but the rider's got, like, kiddie pool, silly string. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, like, just break down those walls of nightlife because they're so fucking stupid. Right. Like, it's so douchey and pretentious. Like, it's all a bunch of drunk people pretending that they're, like... Better than they are. Yeah, it's really not. It's so, remarkable. like, I love the ability. I can walk into a town and the club that might normally not want me will take me and I'll be like, but you know, you can't have a dress code this night. You can't have this. And I'm just going to destroy your club. And they don't give a fuck because they make enough money. Yeah. Do you think the return is better that night or then the then the uh, residual effect is what they're really looking for. Well, you could take it either way, right? There was a period in my career where booking me would come with a certain amount of backlash. For I've sure. I've been banned in a few Canadian towns. Hey, congrats. Uh, what are we talking? Uh, are you from Canada? No, but I know uh, a lot of Canada. I'm uh, just there. I think I'm banned in Barrie, Newfoundland. <laughs> I shut a club down the second night. In Newfoundland? Oh, the second night it was open. Fuck me. I did, they booked me for a grand opening for both nights. I did it with, they were like, we want you Friday and Saturday. Monday, club lost its liquor license. What? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. But it was like, what do you want me to do? Like, because the town was so small, they're like, whoa, we're not used to seeing our fucking, like, kids acting like this. It's yeah. like, well, that's what do you think? I'm that's sorry. They, that's who they like, really are. I'm going to put it on the internet. This is what, this is what, this is what it is. Uh, yeah, there's a couple, uh, they said, I think there was like one fucking college that said if I showed up on campus, I'd get arrested in Virginia or something a long time ago. Right. I don't know. All of it adds to the, you know, it's the, it the, it's the mystique, yeah. it's the, the allure. So, 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 so this is what's crazy is like, there are people that, that outside of what you are, which is like an entertainer, you're a body bringer, you're like there to fuck around and have fun. There's people that get paid simply to make an appearance and dip. You are required to fuck around. Well, right? Like you kind of have it in your right. In your well, contract. I mean, the way it would work is look, if I burn a club, a few clubs, word gets around, right? No one's going to book you. Right. My job is like, bro, I'm being paid to party. Basically. Like, yeah. I'm going to over deliver. Like, I show up early, I hang out. Like, these kids who show up from like, think about it. Like, my career is kind of built a lot on social media. It's the way we all interact with, quote unquote, your fans. Yeah. So when they show up in merch, and they're there, like, why would I want to be a dick and not show up and be like, I want to take a photo with you. Like, dude, thank you. Like, what I've been doing is kind of reaffirmed. It's cool to see these people show up. Right. How, how long do you think you want to do it for? I'm done. You're done? Oh, my God. Are you really done? Oh, I'm so old. My hangovers are brutal. Do you, are you like, really I'm gonna done be for real? Like, I'm from this. I'm getting there. What do you I'm think is the there. cutoff point? I mean, I don't think I'll be able to change my like entire lifestyle. But I mean, like I'll go out if I want to, or if I want, you know, I think it won't be for 10 years. It's been my bread and butter. Like I, even if I wanted to leave, I kind of couldn't. That's yeah, all it's like, where, that's what I'm saying. Right? When like, you say you're done, growth? it's like, where do you go? So like the, like, to be honest, the merch is like the, num like that's it. It's completely yeah. eclipsed 
the the finances of the parties. Like right. the parties are fun again because for like three years I felt trapped where I'm like, shit, what am I doing? What am I doing? How do I get out of this? Like, what's the next step? Right. Because it's really easy to be trapped in nightlife. And then you're like the 50 year old dude who's still doing it. And it's just sad. Uh, kind of, but kind of, fun, kind of dope. At some point, that's also kind right, of right. But I didn't transition this into like Hugh Hefner. I transitioned into like the creepy dude in the club with a fanny pack. You know what I mean? It's like that motherfucker different... was creepy too, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I went but, to that but house. I'd rather be creepy. Was yeah. sad as shit, dude. The Playboy Mansion was garbage in the latter half. Like I went when it was way beyond the cool years. Really? And it was fucking so sad, dude. He was getting shuffled around by this like group. No, no. Of... But was the ha- was the everything else like? A... Yeah, but you know what's so funny, man? Never meet your heroes. Be- because the e- yeah, fact. Because the the internet has given us full freedom of sexuality. And, and prowess that that place doesn't have an allure because it's those things that you can think of in your mind of like women walking around in bikinis and this fucking and all yeah this but sh- did he also have the same lost. tastes he's always had so he didn't nothing like, changed he didn't advance he's no. like oh yeah check out these hot ladies I yeah. got it's like bro they were like hot in like the 80s yeah, yeah like nothing do you see how they do you see the girls that are coming out these days right the new that's, model it's that, like that's he's the showing like the iPhone too he was stuck yeah. he was stuck in the way past yeah. so it's just kind of like it lost but was there like a little bit of like yo this is I'm on sacred ground. Kind of, dude. But I, honestly, man, maybe it's just I was jaded. I was just like, fuck, I thought for some reason I'd saw, see somebody fucking. Like, I wanted something to happen that made me go, oh, shit, that's the thing that happens here. None of that shit right. happened. Right, like, that's uh, that's like what Stan Hope said. He's like, some people just need to, like, that's all they had, just die. Like, you should have yeah. just, like, you could have just died at your prime and be just... He should have died. He should have died at the height of that fucking place. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, when the Playboy like, Club like was Like, at the Chicago time when Larry and- Flint got shot, that's when... That's like the peak of all their like. That's when was that? The eighties. He got shot in the nineties. I thought. Yeah. Right? So yeah. like nineties is peak. Right before the internet hits, Playboy. That's it. Yeah. If you got killed then, who? Tupac, Talk Biggie, yeah, Hugh Hefner and You're Versace. Forget it. <laughs> that's what you really want, though. When you get like, I think about that all the time. Would Tupac have been a great artist if he was alive? I don't fucking know. Would Biggie have been his fucking beloved now? I don't know. I mean, it's easy to speculate and go, of course, they were so dope. It's like, yeah, dude, but a lot of guys were so dope. I don't know how, I don't know if they would have continued. And that goes so long for every piece of art ever. Like every right. art that you're like, I don't know, could that artist keep doing that shit? I, I don't fucking know. That's why there's dudes that are like, Steve Martin's ass, he quit the fuck, he's quit stand up. He was like, fuck this, I'm not right. doing it anymore. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Well, Eddie's about to come back. See, is he? I hear rumors. No, he is. He is. He's doing clubs right now, man. Wow. Yeah, he's got is a it ne- good? He's got a Netflix special. Well, I can't ask you to answer that because no, I would answer it. I, I would answer it honestly if I knew. I haven't seen him, but I will say this: I am unbearably nervous to find out how he does because I admired him when I was a kid so much that now he's doing it again. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared he's going to be fucking trash. I'm just being honest. Like I'm, sc- I, I hope he's not. But I'm scared he's right, gonna like be Eddie trash. has fuck you money. Yes. Like, but does he want to turn down fuck you Disney money? Right. Does, like, that, I don't think he's doing it because of that. I think everybody and anybody who gets famous, you know this. Anybody who gets famous in any faction wants to keep it and sustain it. And at some point, when it's gone long enough, they want it back. Dave Chappelle didn't come back because it was like, oh my god, the money. He came back because he was like. I gotta be Dave Chappelle again. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like those guys miss. But this being is fucking... a long hiatus. I know, but like, for, but, but yeah. like Will Smith, dude. Will Smith went took a, he went away from movies for a little while. And now he's on Instagram. He's doing fucking right, TikTok. Right, right. But he's like, crushing it. But the difference is Eddie Murphy. What like? What I want is him to come out there and say faggot again. Like, he might. He, huh. He might. You think so? Yeah, because because I would do. They. I would put. There should be a Vegas. Like you should be able to make a bet on a bet Eddie, on, on, we'll Eddie, on Eddie's special. <laughs> like, why is there no casinos yeah. taking bets like that? Like, I that's would a good, love. That's a good bet. Like, if what bet do you think? Special will be How trash? many faggots do you think Eddie Murphy will drop on his special on Netflix? Z- zero. You think zero? Zero. Let me let me say this. If, zero. If he does, if he does, if he does, it will just be tonally a different kind of joke. My my point is like Chappelle said just as controversial shit in his last special as he ever did before. He was just a little bit more clever about the wording. So if Eddie did it, I'm sure he would do it a little bit more. Right. I with hope a, so. With a smarter Bro, slight. I just saw Dice in New York. Yeah. And I was scared. Because he's made a comeback. I was scared. Yeah. And he ripped it mm-hmm. at the stand. Bro, he was so good. He yeah. took that same character as if it matured like and grew up. But it's still done. It's so good. So I that, was that's so what I'm saying. Away. Eddie could do that. My fear is... That ain't gonna. Ha- I don't know. I, I I I'm just afraid that is like he gonna do this. Is he gonna come out in a wild the, the outfit? Leather, the leather suit and shit. You know, uh, he comes uh, out in that red leather. Dude, fucking how suit. much do you think he got paid? 
I mean, honestly, I've heard a bunch of jokes about what the money is, and Netflix will never admit it. I asked the guy who books specials at Netflix about it. I was like, I, I heard it was $200 million. He's like, you didn't hear anything. That's not even true. And I was like, really? Because it sounds like it's true. That sounds like Chappelle got, what, 100 Just To get Eddie? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was. I mean, look, the rumors get out somehow, whether or not they're total total right, bullshit. Right, right. Somebody said well, something. Well, I'm excited. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it will be. Hopefully. Hopefully. It could be trash. So let, yes, me, jump, let me jump backwards. Um, what I'm what I'm curious about is like we live this life as comics on the road, of like the hotel can get depressing sometimes, the venues get depressing when the fans don't line up the way you want, like when the people don't aren't there right. for the things you want. Like, does that hit you in the same kind of way? Do you have those nights at the hotel when you're like, "Fuck, this is draining me, man." Um, I have because are in the you morning. solo on the road? I'm. I try not to be, but there are some times where you are. Right. Look, it's. It's easy not being solo in Miami. Everyone wants to come with you. Sure. When you're like, hey, I'm going to Winnipeg, they're like, bro, have fun. I'll see you back in New York. Peace. Um, yeah, I've learned to deal with, uh, like, in the same way comics have learned to deal with bombing, where it's just like, eh, that wasn't that bad. Like, whatever. Sure. I've learned to deal with, like, bro, I've had some really shitty parties. Uh, but I still make the best of them, and the crowd has a good time. It, it's just like, hey, there's a snowstorm, and 17 people showed up. Like, what are we supposed to stare at each other? It's just super weird, right? You just do it. So anyway. we just we just do it. It's just get drunk with them, and you're like, "Hey, I have all this alcohol that's on my rider, so let's get fucked up and then go somewhere else after." Right. Like what? it's kind of one of those things where, you know, I'm pretty antisocial, you know, offline. Sure. But when I'm working, it's it's like you know you got to turn it on. A little what's bit. the what's the can you can you talk about like probably the worst party you've ever had? The worst party I ever had. Well, the worst party yeah. I've ever had was Hoboken. That I had a that made the rounds. You've probably seen it. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Uh, the it was it was the <laughs> easiest gig on the uh, it was the easiest gig in the world. Yeah, it really was. It was like it was so close to my apartment. It was once a month. It was so much fun. And this fucking dude just throws his wife on the bar. And starts fingering her in front of everyone. And I'm like, you see it in the videos. I'm like, what Holy is going shit. Like, what am I? And this dude is yoked, like huge, where it's not like I could be like, Sir, dude, stop. stop. Yeah. And it's like, this is security job or whoever's. Um, and then it just makes it on the internet and like instantly. Damn. Everywhere. Every, I was like, my career's over. Over. The last thing you want to do as a party guy be associated with alleged, you know, sexual assault. Luckily, it came. It, it took a few steps for the truth to fully come out. Because first it was like guy assaults woman. Then it's like husband and wife. And then they're like cop, and and wife. And then, then it's like all right, my name finally left all. Yeah, the you had clipping. nothing to do with it. At no, time. I was like, I was just, a, I was just a. At that point, but I was it turns just observing. Out he was a or he was an ex cop. He was like some cop or some shit. Uh, and he fingered his. He threw his wife on the bar. <laughs> Yeah, and finger on the bar, and you're right there. I'm literally a foot. Of, I'm like on the bar, like <laughs> I'm no, but I stop pouring, and people see the, and I'm like, everyone. There's dudes who were at the bar ordering drinks that were like, like face, like literally staring at a labia. We're like, how long okay. did this go on for? <sighs> Ten seconds, right? Before it just was like, but it was all everyone had their phone. Right, out. right, right. Uh, but the mayor of Hoboken closed the place down. There's a mayor in Hoboken? Yeah. That feels like a place that def doesn't have a mayor. Right, like that has for like a, hobos. Yeah. Like, you know, Hoboken. It says a dog uh, is a mayor. But to, like, and he, I still, I talk about this all the time. We should have made a shirt for it. It says that, he said that my party was an affront to human decency. An affront to human decency? Right. That's a phenomenal name. Oh, I was like, this is great. I'm the that should be like, if decency. that, I would, that's like a, that's like a, that's like a review for a movie. Right, right, right. I would this take that front yeah. to human decency. So, really scary at the moment. Hilarious a year later when you could be like, hey, remember that shit remember we that survived? Time that yeah, I've that almost chick? lost my career a few times. Or at least I thought I had. What was the other time? Beyond the... Well, the losing, Instagram, was the, losing, Instagram, um, losing Instagram was a big one. Let me think. Because you had 1.4 million well, people. When they kicked you off, you thought that was over? Did you think it was like for real? Right, because I, I didn't even run a backup. I was like, I'm good. I'm on Netflix now. Like, I'm right. untouchable. Like, 1.4 million. Like, I got everybody. Dude, I had people hit me up that I was like, you know, didn't expect that were, that I not would say admire, but it was like, oh, that's kind of cool that people would slide in your DMs. Like, I saw your documentary. Like, right. you're like, oh, shit. These people are actually watching this shit. Uh, yeah, I was on cloud nine. And then I was like, 10-year anniversary, bam, 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 boom, gone. 
It's so fucked. Uh, it was hilarious. Wait, let, uh, let, 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 me, let me correct that real fast. The Netflix documentary that you're in, that's still up though, right? Yeah. It's called American yeah. Meme. Yeah, I wasn't behind the title, but uh, it's know. the American Meme. It's so funny. I, I was just Dude, say- it was great for my career because I was the only person nobody knew on that, but I got to fucking soak up the juice of all the stars on it because that's why you watched. And then I got just all the residual love. It's funny because I knew I knew who you were before you did that. And when I watched it, you were probably the only one I was interested in watching. I'm being genuine. Thank you. That's the, I've told well, everybody. Because I, I was like, yeah, I want to fucking, I want to see what the fuck is that it, about. It, it legitimized my career, or at least what I did a little bit more than just like, oh, this guy's just a fucking idiot. Yeah, but you know what it did though, for real, for me also, like not really knowing you, was like, uh, it gave me another insight into like, uh, who you were as a person. It did a good job of justifying you as like, because dude, somebody could look at like, this is a good example of what the internet does. Dan Bilzerian to like, common Instagram America consumer, they either have two opinions. They're either like, fuck yeah, greatest thing on earth, right. or this guy needs to burn in hell. There right. really isn't any like middle ground with a guy like that. Well, I'll tell you why. Go ahead. Because he gives you the exact content that's on brand, right? And it's exactly, he like, doesn't you know what you're getting. ever. You're like, guns, tits, money. Period. Guns, tits, tits money. money. That's Pool. it. Guns, that's tits, it. Money. That's it. Yeah. So it's like, that's his brand and that works. But for me, I've always like, I'm just going to be honest. Like, what do I have to lose? Like, but whatever. that's what was good about you. So it, was it like, revealed a little bit more of you that I was like, I don't really know enough about this guy when it has your mother in there talking about this parental struggle that you have of like, you know, whether or not that was overtly produced, but it's just like, there's a moment of truth that I love as a comedian because there's things that we like to tell. That's like, it's nice to see the real shit. Like there's right. some real shit in there where you for a moment are like, it's a little bit of a weird bummer when your parents are bummed out, even though you're successful. Right. That's a real fucking thing. Oh, yeah. You'll never see that with Bulzerian. That's my point is like, it was nice to get that slice of you that I don't think we could get from the internet. So for what it's worth, the documentary did its job for me right. when I was viewing you. Thank you. you. Know? Well, it was awesome. It was because I, I did a, I did something before that on Showtime and it was a fucking dud. Who, what was that? What'd oh, you do? my God. I got sold on this thing. It was incredible. They were like, Kirill, we want you for the show. Dick Wolf's executive producer. I was dun, like, dun. are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, man. Dick Wolf. You're going to be a fucking procedural show in no time. Showtime. Yeah. You could do whatever you want. Yeah. They want to show New York City at 3 in the morning. The show's called 3 a.m. We're getting a crime scene investigator. We're getting a lady who works in a hospital. We're getting a hooker. We're going to get you. You're like, I'll get I, the hooker. And okay. I was like, oh, oh. they're like, we're going to show the how New York lives at 3 a.m. I was like, uncensored Showtime. Let's do this. Dick Wolf. Oh, my God. And then they fucking cut the thing together. It was like the hooker's like crying about her boyfriend. I'm like, I thought I was going to see you like get <laughs> fucked behind a dumpster. Yeah. Like, show me real New York at three in the morning. Show me real and they New made York. like they, they were like, oh, fight with your girlfriend about this. It's like, what? And was, then it was just Dick became even a part of it or no? I think he just put his name on it. Yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it was terrible, yeah. and they didn't market it. They didn't promote it. I none of us. What was it? All called? of us were embarrassed. It was three a.m. on show. It's called three a.m. Yeah. Everybody watch three a.m. Yeah, on go. Showtime it's tonight. Fucking bad. <laughs> Comment. It's... Let us know what you think. That's funny though when they stamp names on things. I always think that's funny when they're like, "You're like Dick Wolf." You're like, "Fuck." Maybe the involvement will be high, right? Like, right. I just did a show with Little Dicky that's coming out in March on FX, and you know, Dave. I, yeah, with Dave. Oh, yeah. sick. And I'm not good at faking these fucking press things. I'm so trash at it. I've always oh, really? been trash. I don't care enough. Like, Do they give like, you like a no. thing like, here's what you got to no. Don't say this. No. Don't say that. They no. just let comedians out in the wild dude, and hope that you're because trained for Because they know that we'll never say it. I'll never do it. They know that we will go against the grain. Oh, the script. If yeah. they're like, hey. We're always going to break that. Were you honest? Too honest. Really? What happened? Yeah. Well, there's, oh, you uh, can't the, say the it? Woman, I will. Yeah, I don't no. give a fuck. The woman from Entertainment Tonight was like, <laughs> she's like, Kevin Hart's a producer on the show. How's Kevin? I was like, I never met that motherfucker. I never met him one day in my life. He, w- I go, he's in the green room. I still haven't met him. And the woman's face was like, uh, that's not what we want to hear. I was like, hey, man. I'm not- but the thing is like, oh, yeah, we run a mile with Kevin every yeah. morning before the shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we make a Nike commercial on right. fucking. No, but it was just like, uh, there was no disrespect. I was like, I, I like Kevin Hart. I don't know him. Right. But like, I'm certainly not going to sit there and fucking phony it up for these people to pretend like. Oh, because they want you to. And a lot of people, I feel like, would because they'd be like, oh, Kevin, the best, because it makes you look like you're fucking boys. I I don't want to do that shit. So I did that. Of course, my agent was sitting there like, you know, why the fuck are you doing that? I was like, I can't lie. If you ask me something about Dave, I know Dave well. We're good friends. I can't can't pretend to give credit where I don't know how to. Do you know what I mean? So that 
that's a huge it's issue. Like, Kev, with thanks it. for financing this. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks right. for fucking playing around with them. But like, we're putting your name on it. That's at in least. the office. Right. That's right, office right. shit. I don't know any of that stuff. I'm fucking down here. But I think that happens a lot. You know, like Dick, Dick Wolf saying he's a part of that thing. I bet you if Dick Wolf really put his fingers on it, it probably would have been. Isn't dope. Dick Wolf like nine thousand years old? Law and Order has been on for forty years. He's been dead for twenty six. years. I don't think he's alive. He's yeah. like Walt Disney. He's communicating he's like fucking frozen. through. Yeah, he's frozen. They still make Law and Order episodes, which is bro. Insane. He has. He has. He has. Dick Wolf does Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, and they got one more. Another Chicago show. And I always said if I was tanking out here and I just didn't want to be in L.A. anymore, I would move back to Chicago where I'm from. And just be and an And just actor. jump on one of those. I want to be the guy that when everybody runs by, they're like, where is it? And I go, he's in the break room. Like, that guy. That's all I want <laughs> right. to be. And just make them keep going, you know? That's all I want is like one throwaway line every fucking week. So good. The computer tech guy that just, goes, just, yeah. I'm working yeah. on it! You know, that fucking guy. I'd be <sighs> that guy any day of the week. What would you, what was you, this is, this is a legitimate thing for people in our bullshit-ass business. Because, you know, look. What you do is fun. What you do is dope. But the game is bullshit. So, like, if you have to crack out at some point, if you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. Where are you going? Well, but the thing was, for me, there's a life. There is, like, an end, right? For comedy, I feel like you just, you're just going to do this forever. Yeah. Like, who's going to... The voices in your head aren't going to stop talking to you to... You know? You're always going to be funny. Yeah, you're always sadly, gonna, yeah. Uh, with me, it was just, like, it's just taxing on my body because I can't not drink. Yeah. I can't, you know, I don't do that shot that someone hands me. I get called a fag, right? Because, Kirill, look on the internet. You're just a party machine. Right. You should, so, you should start sucking dick while they hand you the shot. I'd be like, like hey, I'll, man, blow, I I'll suck it out of your yeah. dick. You do it, and I'll blow <laughs> you, you. You want me to be a real fag, dude? Yeah. Kiss uh, me, bro. Kiss me, then I'll take a shot. I should just shot. start blowing guys at my parties. Fuck yeah, at dude. At this point, I should just change Whole it Whole new market. Like, the club owners are like, what? Then you start the gay clubs, then you make a, a ton I of fucking money. I would love just so much Clean house. pussy at a gay club. You Have you done gay, gay bars? No. No one's ever booked me for one. And I think they're well, uh, they're you heterophobic. You're too, yeah, they're, yeah, you're <laughs> they're too, too straight. They're, I'm too manly for them. You are too straight. You could, If you were more effeminate. Uh, trust me, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> I've kissed more guys than anyone. In this really? Room. Yeah. You kiss guys at parties? No. But I have. At home? No. I mean, you know, not at home. I've done it. That's You're skirting joke. around it, man. I don't yeah, know. Maybe no, you I've, have. I've, I could admit it. I know. I I've, <laughs> I don't care. You no, have. I've never done it in private. No. Yeah. It's always been in public. Yeah. But when a dude comes up to you at the club and he starts fucking around, what do you have a limit with people? No, no, because no, I don't think anyone's trying to sexually assault me like that. Well, I was just going to say. Girls are worse than I was than just going to say, girls there's no way bad. girls don't sexually assault. Girls are the Grab worst. Grab your dick and shit. Yeah, and yeah. they're like, ha, ha, ha. And you're like, what? how is, you know. Yeah. I was waiting for pizza one night at, in West Hollywood, and uh, I, I had a cab drive me down there because it was the only place that was open. I went and got a piece of pizza. I'm standing out on the side. This guy comes up to me, he grabs my, like, puts a finger in my ass, grabs my ass, and I turn around, and I fucking, like, wave my arm, and it's three of these dudes. And he's like, he's like ooh, tough guy, tough guy. And I was like, am I going to get gang raped by right, three what gang you, guys? Right, because you, you can't be like, <laughs> I'm going to call the police. They're like, what? Are you, what? Like, what are you? That's like, the guy's going to be like, what are you, a fag? Yeah, and the, the cop guy is like, I'm right fag. here. Right, right. Arrest him, boys. Yeah. 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 Handcuff him and put it in. I think, I think, dude, I think dudes, dudes, uh, are aggressive, but not as aggressive as but there's chicks. Like, chicks look, are fucking aggressive in that in that world. I'll under I get that there are certain things that girls can get away with that guys can't. But like guys that get too overly like aggressive about that concept is also weird. Like at my camp, fuck yeah, at my camp we had this girl who was just joking around with some old dude, and she was hot. And he was like, "Yo, can you kick my hand?" And she went up to kick to kick it, and she slipped, and he like kind of like flipped her under, and her tit popped out, and she got up and slapped him, sure. and he freaked out and was like, "I want the cops here. This is assault." And we're like, "Bro, you're all drunk. You fucking moved her leg so she fell, and she got up and slapped you for it. Like she was ready to keep drinking and yeah. have a good time. Yeah. It wasn't like a, you know, it was just like a friendly, fun slap. He lost his mind." And he's like, I'm an ex-cop, da-da-da-da-da, this is fucking bullshit. If I laid hands on her like that, I'd be in handcuffs, but women can get away. I was like, dude, relax. And then it was fucking hilarious. One of my boys is like a cop, too, and he's like, all right, I'm going to go talk to him. Like, let me try to like calm the situation before the cops, before we actually the have to call cops the cops. Real cops, yeah. And uh, this and his this this dude, this nut, nut job, he, he brought his friend there, and his friend was like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. He's just, you know, he was 9-11. He's a little aggressive. Da, da, da. He just, da. And my buddy, the cop, like, talks to him, comes back. He's like, 
there's no getting through to this guy. He's like, I was literally <laughs> yeah. about to tell him like all the good cops died on 9-11. Like he was just like, you need to relax about this whole like 9-11 shit right now. Yeah. Like you can't He kept keep... saying it over. Yeah. Over. He was like, I saw shit. And... 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, sir, 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 what does that have to do with the fact that you let a girl fall and then she slapped you? Yeah, you slipped her fucking feet out. No, look, there's like girls can be wild and shit when they get drunk and do dumb shit too, just as much as guys do. But guys like that have to take like that guy's definitely not stable. That's like a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Like you look at that, you're like, I'm glad we avoided whatever is going to happen here. But. That guy's gonna unload on someone else. Well, yeah, you, and this is wild too, because uh, this is for people's reference too. You throw a camp. How many years have you done the camp? I got a fourth year coming up. It's gonna be your fourth. Wh- it's the, it's the, yeah, it's year four. It's a camp in Connecticut. And I went there, uh, like, I was off one weekend. They were like, hey, Carl, come up here, check this out. You know, like, uh, and it was awesome. It was an adult camp. Everything you wanna do as a kid with alcohol. Right. And I, I documented the whole thing because it was fun as fuck. And the owner was like, hey, Kirill, we got so much love from social media because no one's really seen this, you know, especially, you know, they don't never had like somebody with a following come through and actually. Like, so you took over a camp that existed. So they run this camp every weekend in from May to like October. Holy During shit. During the week, it's a kid's camp. And on the weekends, the adults come in and fuck in the same cabins that the kids live. Tight. Awesome. Uh, and they were like, would you like to take over a weekend? Uh, and we did it, and it's awesome. It's so much fun. You know who does one too? What's his dude? Who's the fi- who's that actor? Who's really creepy with the pencil mustache? You know who I'm talking about. How many though? Jake Gyllenhaal, Adam no, Driver, no, 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 like old, old, old? P- uh, with like the little pencil mustache. The oh, 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 fucking! Uh... I can't think of his name. Yeah, I see him, dude. God damn it! I'm closing my eyes right now, and I see him. Hold on. His name is. Um... And he's and he's like it was very it was, he's, he's just very flamboyant. Yeah, he's flamboyant old gay dude. Um, uh, his name is uh, uh, God. This is gonna kill me. Do you know who this is? You know who it is? You gotta look it up on your phone right now. It's um, uh, well, I don't even remember the movies he's done. Uh, I know he has slick back hair. P P with a P. No, it's slick back hair, right? That's right, what you're talking right. about. Little pencil I'm, mustache. I might, I might have a text message. John Waters. John Waters. Yes. Man, my mind Woo! is fucking good. Some days he John does Waters a does a there. camp. He Shit. does a weekend there. Like they they let like some gossip girl fan club take over. It's awesome. Wow. So what's the name of the what's the name of the spot? Club Getaway in Connecticut. But then you I just you call, call it Carrill's Wet Hot Carrill's American, Wet Hot Summer. American Summer. Yeah. And uh, if you're off, I highly recommend. It's so, like it's a lot of fun. It's a dope cabin. Activities all day, all night. Open bar. I get all the liquor sponsors to like donate booze. The tickets are fucking dirt cheap too. What, the t- what does it cost Dude, to go there? Uh, without it sounding like a plug, but it's like around five hundred bucks, and it's every meal. And a bed for two nights, and with, all the activities with food and drinks. Everything I That's give you open ridiculous. bar. Yeah, you can't get a hotel room in Manhattan for that. Fuck no. Right. And food and drinks. Food and the food. And is what are the incredible. what are the activities? By the way, I is have about like, a, there's about a hundred. You can go. You can go uh, archery, zip line, uh, just uh, anything in the water. Yeah, Boats water and shit. skiing, all the shit. Like they have the fucking giant inflatable stuff. It's it's. It's awesome. It really is. What a is lot that of thing fun. called? When you jump at the blob? Do you have yeah, one of those? Those blob. things are they got hilarious. The blob. They got those everything. things are so yeah. fun, dude. I've yeah. done those once. I was like, this is exactly what this is. There is a little piece of us that like dies when we get older. That you that you like. It just the ch- the child thing goes away. And when you do things like that, you're like, fuck, I miss. Well, someone I miss said so it much on Reddit. They're like, someone said that they're like they were talking to their 90 year old grandmother, and she said, I still I might. Look ninety, she's but like, I but feel, I feel eighteen. Dude, my she's like, I act. That. She's like, I feel like I'm still eighteen in my head, and I will always feel like. She's like my my ninety year old friends, I still look at them and think of them in that same eighteen year old demo, even though I can see that they're ninety like me. We're just friends enough that we interact like we're eighteen still. Yeah, how old do you feel? Old. What I do you feel, feel old because I'm um. I, I'm like I totally get midlife crises now. Like it's this. How old are you for re- in real? I'm life? 35. And you feel? No, I'm 35. Yeah, 35. You got? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think I had a stroke just now. Uh, yeah, I just feel old. You feel weathered. You know why? Because I my job also involves hanging around 19 to 22 years. Yeah, olds, I was just gonna say. Right. It's like a. It's the older I get, it's just turning into like a daycare center sometimes. Do they throw that at you ever? What? They're like, how old are you? And you're like, oh. 35. And they're like, ew. No, they're like, oh my God. Like, that's, that they're, the, 
The there girls love that. that shit. Yeah. You're like a dad. Look, if I didn't have a, a following or a brand or anything and I was just hanging out at the club, yeah, I'd probably be like, ew, get out of here, creep. But they don't care about age. Like, dude, there was fucking 30 year old girls blowing Hugh Hefner. You know what I mean? Yeah, age's but, not a... but you and Hugh Hefner, two different things, by Yeah, I mean, just he's to be a clear. fucking legend. <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But You're the... a dope dude, but that, yeah, 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 that's a different yeah, 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 fucking thing. Yeah, but don't thing. forget, Hugh Hefner was getting blown by tens. I'm he being was. approached by twos. By, in, 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 ten year, in, in Winnipeg. And 10 year olds, by the way. Right. I'm the Hugh Hefner of Winnipeg. You are the Hugh Hefner of fucking There's uh, a lot of middle Canada. That's I really have a good Why a lot of Canada shit? They just love you. Canada fucks with you. 19 a party. That's right. I forget about yeah. that shit. You can drink up there. Yeah, so those kids are like clamoring. Dude, uh, you know, do you know Simon Rex? Yeah. I mean, so it, like not, he, not he, like that, he's but yeah. like, he can't go to Canada. Um, Criminal record. Whatever. I, it's literally, if you have anything, if you don't have a spotless record, Canada hates you. I know. And he's like, it, yeah. like, I lose that on so much money because Canada is such a, they love, they, they're, they're just Does he really do parties good. too? Uh, I think it's just when he performed, but he lost that whole market. Right. It sucks. That's Canada's awesome. Bogus. Like I'm petrified of being like arrested. Not I think me getting arrested would be great for my brand. Yeah. But it would be horrible for my bank account because I would lose Canada. It depends. This is crazy. I've talked about this on the podcast before. I used to do that for a living when I first moved to LA. I what? used to get bands into Canada that had criminal records. Whoa. Literally really? what I did. Yeah, it was crazy. Very specific. So I can I I I know what to do. I know how to do it. I know. People can get in, it just costs money. That's the bottom right. line. It costs a lot of money. Yeah, for each time or forever, they can each expunge time, your record. Each time. Yeah, yeah. You're basically fucking bri- you're basically uh, bribing, them. bribing the Canadian government. It's it's actually a brilliant system. And the only reason that happens, by the way, is because we did that to them. So it's a reciprocation thing, right? Like that's that's what criminal entry is for almost every country, is depending on your country's laws, the opposition laws usually are stronger based on what you create because it's kind of like a big dick competition. Right, right, right. So Canada says fuck you to America uh-huh. because America said fuck you to Canada for quite a long time. So who says fuck you to Canada? We do. We always have. Yeah. Have we really? Yeah, we pers- I don't know anything. Okay, look at, really it like, look, at look at it like this. Look at it like this. This is wild. The, the immigration in America right now is like the biggest issue in fucking everyone's right. mouth. It is, it is very, very difficult for anybody to get a visa for America. But for some reason in Canada to get a work visa to get here is is unbelievably difficult for somebody that is in the same Do they continent. feel like we're just so close? It's like go play in your own sandbox. It's because it's because of the the difference in who do we hate more, Mexicans or Canadians? Me or the country? The country. The country hates like Mexicans what's harder? More. Yeah, I hate Mexicans more. <laughs> no, no, I think the country. I the think country, it's hell calling them snow Mexicans. Snow Mexicans. Yeah. yeah. So there's just we're the country's by harder on them. Va- varieties of Mexicans, right? <laughs> the country's harder on. Because Mexican immigration Dude, is a whole Dude, it's funny. Thing. You can make fun of all that shit, but we run a merch company, and I'll tell you what, we were just talking about it. Like, yeah. you can make fun of Mexicans and talk as much shit as you want, but God damn it, we've had white employees, and they are the worst. Yeah. Like, the, they're so entitled and so lazy yeah. that, like, I'm sorry, like, we, we have Mexican guys that are, literally I would probably, maybe not, but take a bullet for. Probably not. Not really. Not really. No. Nah. No. Nah. You'd metaphorically take Metaphorically, a I'm like, that dude's, like, that dude's so my guy. That's my guy. But if you need to take him away, take him away. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, Mexicans are taking all the jobs. It's because they're actually working." Yeah, and also that's not that's also another fucking myth. They're not taking all the way all the jobs. Right. They're all, they're working the jobs that they always work. That's always like one of those misnomers that gets pushed right. around. It's like, just like, like a it's a it's bullshit catchphrase. But the real truth is, like, dude, I have a I have a, a pretty solid Mexican fan base. And you know what? My favorite thing about these motherfuckers is you can make fun of Mexicans like in loving, yeah. and they love it. Right, you start talking shit about whites, and they get real nervous and mad at you, and you stepped on their toes, and you've called them the wrong thing. Right. The one thing I love about my Mexican fucking fans, like I did a couple shows in Pasadena, it's all Mexicans, dude. They just they, want a good time. They love having fun. They huh. just want to fucking talk shit, have a laugh, have a good time. That's the that's what I find more than anything. This is something interesting about a parallel of like my shows, if they're racially mixed, I know I'm gonna have way more fun because Absolutely. when it's all white. For some fucking reason, like I meeting. sell some I sell some weird joke off that I know culturally they don't like. It's not even about them. That's the worst part. They defend something that isn't them. Have it's you really ever fun. had? A, okay, yeah. Like they, I tell, they, I they, they, they take offense on behalf of someone else. Yeah, they, they have no like, business taking offense for. Well, everybody's a proud victim. That's why I know. But today is it's the worst it ever was. It's the weirdest it's ever been. I tell a joke about having a black pilot. I had my first black airline pilot. So I fly every weekend. Dude. Right. I've only had whites. Okay. Yeah. And I tell a joke about having my first black pilot, and I'm not going to finish the joke. But as soon as I go through it, 
people, white people, half of the white people love it, and half of the white people are like, I don't know if I'm supposed to. It's this weird, like, of you're course you're supposed club. to. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Let it the fuck go. Just, like, just like, what, like, you're, like, you're not standing there at a fucking Amtrak station saying this, because then you're like, all right, this might be a rally. Right. But, like, this is a comedy club. Like, And I do do that on some... Sundays. Everybody knows where we are on Sunday mornings. Amtrak station. Noon to two. <laughs> Amtrak station. Um, I did say this. This was so fucked up this weekend, though. This was so mean, but I did love it just because I was in Denver, and I just knew that, like, you know, Denver is extremely liberal, and I was like, I don't know if you guys know what's going on. This, you know, in Australia, it's on fire, and people were like, oh yeah, and I was like, well, I think, um, I think because of that, I want to donate the proceeds tonight, and everyone started to be like, whoa, and I was like, to Trump's 2020 campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so Dude, they, people i mean the faces were like no! no i was like you already clapped it's over you already did it i just like fucking i like i love i love doing that to people to get their goat because i'm like you let it go this is like relax you're not as important as you think you are none of this shit is real we're fucking around like that's kind of the world you live in too is like you can't take much serious because it's just for fun all that shit's for fun right it's weird because I've kind of have my own little pocket on the internet where I'm like South Park, where right. at this point, most people are like, it's Carell. Like, just, they know. They're like, what are you? It was easier on Slut Whisper because somebody would fight with me and someone would be like, dude, you're following an account called Slut Whisper. Like, what did you think you were going to yeah. discuss? Yeah. Like, have an honest, reasonable right. conversation about something. Like, of course it's going to be offensive and stupid. Uh, but, but you still get clapped at. Yeah, but getting clapped at is part of the process. Dude, being oppressed is part of the whole. Dude, without outrage culture, there'd be very little to talk about too, right? Right. Well, you do you think you gain more followers when you when you start wars like that? Like you you'll take a clip yeah. that some some dummy yeah. says to you and you're like, yeah, "Come on, because, motherfucker." Yeah, because they want to see that you're quick, that you're clever, right? You're not just a dude who's just like, "Look, a lot of the internet is faceless," right? Uh it, almost all of it. Everyone's kind of faceless, so when you could be Dude, they, they just it's like I interact on my page all day because it's funny to me. So you you open the DMs, the, Dude, the request, I read and you everything. Lose it. It's silly. It, I treat it yeah. like a hangout. It's right. like we just bust balls, and that's just what it is. And unfortunately, though, because now half the shit gets reported for bullying. Like I'll you get reported for that? Dude, I'll write something like "Shut up, fatso" as a comment back to my girlfriend. And they'll be like, "This is harassment and bullying." I'm like, "That's my fucking girl. She she's sitting right next to me." I just saw I just saw your girlfriend posted um a picture of her butt. Or I something. did. I posted oh, you her did. butt. And and she got it got taken down. It got taken down and then this other girl chimed in before it got taken down that she was like, "Oh my god, I have it. It's so stupid. Like these people exist. That's the scary part." Like some some girl was worst, mad because you posted a picture of your and girlfriend's butt. And the worst butt part is these people that are your the girlfriend ones, told you to post. Yeah, and these people are like these people are motivated. The problem with people like us is I'm lazy. Right. right. So my opinions stay in my head or sometimes they'll come out to the real world. But like these people who are like offended or freak out, they're the ones who go and vote. They're the ones who make Fuck all yeah. the decisions. Yeah. Uh, so this chick writes to me, if you care about this woman, you wouldn't have posted this. Hopefully she escapes from you. Hopefully she wa escapes, escapes from, from, you. from you. Nice, dude. Dope. Um, Let her go, bro. Like, you do have her chained up. You are a bad, bad man. Oh, and her bio is... Uh, Christian living in biblical times. Anthony's mom. God bless. Oh, is that Anthony's mom? Oh, Anthony. I know who that is. Oh, yeah, Anthony. I know who that is. Yeah, uh, Anthony's mom. Hey, I love when people do that on fucking Instagram when they go like, um, <laughs> it's always but that's, like that's how little you have to offer to like, the world. Son of Kevin, wife of Ke of, of David. Yeah, Such loving father of twelve, and it's just like, bro, this is how pathetic your existence is. That you're defined by things that you're not in control of. Really, right? Like you're like, oh, I'm an Italian American, you know. Well, mother of seven, and you're like, what? Did you? I've learned nothing about nothing. you except you're annoying already. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's like the stickers on the back of a fucking right. Band. Like my proud family. Dog, my, yeah, yeah. My dog, my dog, my husband, my four kids. It's so it's so funny because people. Well, what that really says to me is, especially as a comedian, when I see that a lot, like because I get those people, the first people that throw like, rocks do you at chirp me. with people or you got you're kind of like. I used to, dude, but I at some point now, like those people used to chirp at me, like the bitch who has the stickers on her back window, right. and her only you identity like... is her family. I I can't bother with that bitch because my fans are so strong that like people that that enjoy what we do is so much better to me that I'm like, uh, fuck you, bitch. I love like, that. I just don't. I I can't. I can't deal with the like for real though. On your come up as a comedian. The negativity is all you fuck with. True. So it, you've gotten it. Yeah. This just, is me. You just get over it at some point. You're like, fuck this. I, I don't want to. I, I can't. 
Like now, uh, dude, like this was bananas. I, I think I've talked about it before, but Calvin Klein put up a fucking billboard in Manhattan and they said all of our new midtown Manhattan billboards are going to feature um, uh, plus size models. Okay. There was a woman, bro, I'm not exaggerating. There was a woman so large in fucking underwear and it, it, that she was the whole billboard. The whole photo was her, right? So I tweeted, I retweeted the tweet and, I, and all I said was, that's one more way to sell more fabric. That's one way to sell more fabric, right? Just fucking around. Yeah. Just, that's one way to sell more fabric. There it's you go. Joke. Plus size models. This, I didn't even tag her. The girl was hunting her own, she was like hunting her own shit. Like, like she was going through the 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 regular news article to find what people. She came at me so hard, and she was like, "Oh, of course, a white male said this. I but I joke about you, and you shoot up a school." And I was like, um, "I was like, yeah, but I'd have to get more ammo because you know you're heavier, like all right, this shit." Right, so right. we kept going back and forth and back and forth until then. It was the racist mob got at me and was like, "You're racist," and I was like, "Whoa." I said this bitch was fat. Never once did I say anything about right. her race. It had nothing to do with it. You, by the way, just sitting here, you didn't know that she wasn't white, right? Like, I just said she was a big girl on a billboard. Right. But automatically, they said, I'm a racist. So I, that's when I go, bye, and I clock out, and I block and whatever, because oh, I'm like... you're lucky. I got deleted off Twitter for that same shit. Oh, for real? Yeah. But I, was just saying, I won't stand there for have you call me a racist. Like, if you can say, like, I'm making fun of this woman's weight, and that's, like, immature and rude, for, well, okay. But like when, when these groups come after you and they're bro, like, you're I, a bigot, I'm like, bro, a bigot? What the when fuck? When people are saying, like, don't you dare, you can't talk about it, don't make fun of a woman's weight, cool. Ask that same girl if her boyfriend cheats on her with a fat girl, the first comment should be like, yo, that fat that bitch. That bitch is fat, yeah. yeah. yeah like, don't fucking, it's all perspective. Yeah, of course. Of I course. got kicked off for making a fat joke, too. What'd you say? Mm, I picked a fight with the wrong person, though. Someone with a little bit more power than me. Uh, this fucking fat girl posted something about, hey, uh, it was about uh, airline seats and seat how people. Thing. No, just oh. people. But she's being like, I don't like the looks I get. Da da da. From like, if I'm too fat, and I was like, Look, I don't care how fat you are. It does. I. It's your life until your fatness inconveniences me. Mm -hmm. If you're spilling over into my seat, we have a problem. We can't smoke on airplanes anymore. Right. So she <laughs> it's goes. A, it's affecting so me. She. I didn't realize this. She was like some big fat YouTuber. I don't know who she was. I don't remember. I can find a screenshot. But she said, "Don't worry, honey. I fly private." And she like, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, That's I can't." Great. I was no. like, "Okay, you got So then I hit her back with, um, "I know. I saw the movie, and I tweeted Operation Dumbo Drops cover, <laughs> and they just yanked me with it. Like, dude, the amount." Huge YouTuber, and you know how loyal YouTube fans are. Oh my god, just bro! Flooded yeah. me. I panicked because I was like, "Yo, if they find the Instagram too, and they'll fucking report that." I, they clipped me on Twitter within like three hours, and then I got kicked off again a year later. You're done, making huh? Some dumb are you done Asian with it? Joke. Um, yeah, I'm done. I missed Twitter because it was a fun way to be creative within like constraints. Like it was like a fun project, right? Like right. how do I say something funny or witty Tiny. within this? It was yeah. cool. Uh, but after they once they told me you're banned for life, Twitter's the only app that bans you for life. Yeah, no, I know that. That's wild, isn't it? They don't give you any chance. No, you're I done. had a second account. They verified it a year later. Like, oh, that's Kirill. Get him out of here again. That's so well. Tw Twitter is. Oh, by the way, when I got kicked off of Slut Whisper, I had to start a new account. Kirill was here. A week after that, they verified Kirill was here. Yeah. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> yeah. Like, what is this? What's the point? That's well. That's like, why did you just take away a whole audience and then because, go? Because because uh -huh. they want to control. They want control, mm -hmm. right? Like they like Twitter is a cesspool. I don't really like Twitter as much anymore. I'm not even. A, I'm not half as active as I should be. For fan engagement is one thing that they're like, oh, but you still have fans that want to like. But Twitter, I feel like it's like you're chasing like it. the viral high. Yeah. Twitter is just chasing the retweets. It is. Because otherwise you just might as well text it to your friends because like if you're not getting more than three retweets, you were like, Why who did am I, I talking do it? to? Right. I know that 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 is the issue with it. And also like those kind of things. Like I make that slight joke. And really, if you want to be, if you really want to get to the depths of it, when I'm what I'm saying is when I said about that girl, when I was like, that's one way to sell more fabric, I'm really taking a shot at Calvin Klein to be like jumping on a social issue to pretend like they're the, you know what I mean? Like they're making a martyr out of fat There's, people. Yeah. It's bullshit. So what I'm really doing, if you had any brains, the people that read it were like, that's a clever way it's of being like, Calvin Klein is bullshit. This yeah. is a way to be like, we, we like big people too. It's like, and by the way, 
This girl was obese. She wasn't overweight. She was obese. And so I was like, this is just Dude, a shot. This it, is just a bullshit way of being like, we're we're trying to solve the bro, problem. Fat is beautiful is like saying salmonella is beautiful. Like if I just went to like, if I went, to, if there's a commercial for like the new steakhouse and they're like, hey, look at this. We've got maggots in our meat. Like, sorry. Like, that's the way. Like, you'd be like, gross. Like, <laughs> that's that's it gross. Yeah. Like, we know we can visually identify what's gross and what's not. I'm fat. I look in the mirror. It's gross. Like, I don't like you don't need to lie to yourself. Right. It's like the Carlin way, like just change the name and condition doesn't change the fucking condition, right? Right. Like that's so it. true. It's well, that, like, well that, but that's the thing. It's like now we've made. I don't know like if you fat saw this, is beautiful. Uh, I, yeah, until you're a fat white guy, and then they're like, "Shut up, fatso." There's right. no when you're a fat. And like you're I know fat this guy, is like the fucked. fucking thing. Like oh, like you know, like fat white guys should be able to take it. We've they ran the world forever. Like <laughs> this, we're like literally fat white people are the only people that could be made fun of, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, but you should be able to take the shots back. And I've always said that, like, when people are like, "I want equality," and then you make fun of them, and I'm like, "But that's what comes with equality." Is like you get some of the benefits, but you also get to be made fun of well, for being another fucking participant on this globe. 100, percent dude. The, the the guy who plays the piano at the comedy store, Jeff, is one of the coolest motherfuckers on earth, and he's gay, and he's talked openly about the fact that he's like, "I can't believe." That people have this thing when they make fun of gay people online, and he goes, "I want. We fought for equality for fucking thirty five years. The fact that I want to be equal means I think I'm open to be made fun of just as much as anybody else." Jeff, however, lives in the world of comedy, so he's much more keen. But that being said, well, he also can understand the difference it. between a joke and and a and, and a and just someone and, just and like a, a blanket statement, a violent right, attack, right, 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 right? Yeah. So, but that's my point: is if we would all be so lucky if everyone had some fucking awareness about it. Like, Jeff is the first person to make a joke. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, God, if we all had this kind of uh, cultural awareness, you're around enough people to get it, that it's like part of the community of making fun of each other is part of the community. That's that's why people well, fucking respect and like each other. That's what we like do. We bust balls. Yeah, that's, that's well. And if they're devoid of that, right, when you don't have that in your world, then it becomes like, oh, that's yeah, that's... Yeah, That's then you bad. become a religious extremist. Right. You become one There's of these no people self awareness. Gets 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 overtly pissed about nothing at all. But what you said is so fucking true. It's funny. If you if you want to give the shots, you should be able to take them. Regardless of your position. That's just the that's that's half of the shit. Dude, that's like when people write unfollow on like my page. Well, they write like, unfollow. You, they're like, I'm unfollowing too far. You're like, you stayed through all, all this the bullshit right <laughs> until i probably hit some nerve right. and then it's like oh that went from being comedy to now fact now he's making statements all of a sudden it's like right. what right they t they decide when it's over for them right up until then they're okay and then they need to announce their departure like there's some fucking i'm leaving i'm kevin oh goodbye <laughs> like bro i didn't even know you were here yeah, bitch bitch you're one of many people that i don't fucking care about oh my god but i walk my fucking followers daily I know that's like an inside comedy joke. Yeah, it is. Uh, how many? Well, how many? By the way, you gain. Do you ever look at the gain and the loss? You know, on the analytics page. Uh, I don't have analytics because when you're private, oh, they don't, they don't give show you, you that shit? shit, which is so retarded. Oh, that's wild. I thought they, they don't tell you, you anything. Shit. They so, want you to be public. That's why I have no analytics. I can just tell you how many followers I'm gaining. What's the advantage of being private then? Um, is the idea that that these people are missing out on something that they're that they might want to see. So, like, a little pro tip, as yeah. I told you before earlier, if you want to gain a faster following and you do have content that might be more intriguing to people to see, whether it's, like, party videos or dumb jokes or whatever, at least for me, keeping it closed off gets more people trying to get in. For as sure. opposed to leaving it open, and then they're like, aha, that was cool, and then they bounce out, and they might not even follow you. And that's what, I mean, it's a great perspective. It's interesting. When you said that before, I was like, I wonder if that's how that is. For someone like me, it's different, right? For us, for comics, it's like... I mean, I still I have need parties to, to most... sell, too. Yeah. But... But your content is also unique from what you do live, right? Your partying is different than what you put online. It's not all you put online. Right. It's not all so because I don't really like... When I'm home, I'm not thinking about the parties, right? So it's right. not... I'm not really posting about that. Like the story on my Instagram stories, if I'm at a party, that's where it all goes. Right. And then my page is just kind of like what mood I'm in, whether it's yeah, dumb, it's just all sorts of it's dumb shit I find on the internet. Do you have someone help you with it? No, it's, it's just, all you. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, uh, do you fucking, do I'm you think less of those that do have help, people that help them? No. Cause a lot of people that do. Yeah. They there's there's teams fucking, of people. there's teams that just, you know, but and that's not like, that's not me. Yeah. Like, I was like, I should just run a strict meme page and just fucking get 10 million followers like all these other guys. I'm like, 
it might be exciting for three hours and then I forget about it in two days and it just like sits there stagnant. So it's just like, why, just let me do me. This is my journal. This is my online diary. I respect the fuck out whatever, of Whatever is there, it's like, hey, and we're honest, dude, we've made merch that sucks, like flops and I'll go on there and be like, guys, I ordered 2,000 wine glass sets that I literally don't know what to do with them. What do you do when they can't, when they can't push them? Oh, I just tell them honestly. I'll be like, I'll throw them in with every order and they're like, oh, wow, thank you. Like, it's yeah. just, I'm, as long as, I've always found, as long as you're honest with them, like, they're going to stick around. Yeah. I feel like it's like really hard to lose a following without being, like, unless you're kicked off. I feel like it's kind of, it's we're in a different generation where we can retain fans. Right. Like, they, they can't have, forget There's you. more leeway. Yeah. That's why I think, like, being some sort of, I think the term fame has been just so, like, bleh, as opposed to, like, back in the day, like, fame was, like, fa like, to be a household name, like, 20, 30, 40 years ago, like, took, you really were famous. Yeah, I would argue, though, you know what I mean? like, the, the There's some rich guy... Th th there's been a billion Dan Bilzerians, right? Yeah. But nobody knew who the fuck they were in 1990, right? There wasn't right. there wasn't anyone like because that wasn't real fame. But fame, real but, fame, but was fame like, has just been convoluted. So what I would say is like, uh, there was an like when people come up to like, "Kirill, you're Instagram famous." I'm like, Bleh. like that's just that phrase is just your 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 recognizable is what I would say. Yeah, yeah. Like like the difference is like, 40 years ago, you want to know what fame is? If you were famous in Hollywood. It's because you were recognized by everybody, but now anybody can be recognized by somebody. That's you can the get difference. famous for having a long neck. Yeah, like that guy. I've seen here. that fucking guy. Like yeah. the like he lost the genetic lottery, and but then won the real lottery. Like is he making money on that? Can he monetize? I mean, all I think shit? that the window of internet relevance in that kind of scene, I feel like, is so like you got to hit it. Like take every club gig. Like take everything you can get. Do fucking commercials for turtlenecks. I don't know. Like yeah. you're literally like I would be doing everything. <laughs> yeah, but good for that motherfucker. That's what I would say when people. Just, I used to hate on that when I was. I a don't younger hate comedian. on that because I, don't I care think there's all. enough money to go around don't for care. everyone. Yeah. I'm just saying the word fame is like when someone's like your Instagram famous. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to really be lumped in with a guy with a long neck. Yeah, but that's like saying to me somebody says, you know who I, you know my so my friend is a comedian. You're a comedian. You know what that does to me when some fucking when some uh. jag off is like my buddy tells jokes sometimes. It's like. Uh. You, you want to think about diminutive? Just just keep this yeah. in mind. When people say that no. to you, keep this in your front of your mind. I will have somebody come up to me who comes to a show, who paid to fucking see me, yeah. who typically came with someone who actually is a fan, and they'll go, you know, I never heard of you, and I'm not a big comedy fan, but this this was all right. It it it's I'd like, rather you've not talked to me at all. A hundred percent. But right. I have that all the time because you're like, People don't associate what you do with skill or talent or ability. They think you just rolled out of bed. 100%. Didn't plan anything. Easy of to this. do. What you do is easy to do. I could, I know what guy, my buddy tells me. I think the jokes. only person that actually successfully did that is Patrice, right? What? That's how he started his career. He heckled someone. And right. the guy goes, You get up here, you get up here and try better. And Patrice right. went up and did 10 minutes and killed. Patrice was made to be a comedic fucking joke. He, would ju he just was too shy to start doing it. That was the problem. Like right, Patrice right. just didn't have the gumption. But and then I'm when glad he did it, that happened. Fuck yeah. And I'm, uh. I'm sad he's dead. So many other comics should have died before him. <laughs> I say that all the time. More so many guys, I'm like, that guy could be dead. No one oh, would fucking please. miss him. Um, this is the one thing I want to touch on. But Patrice on. was also not... A pre he's one of those comics that became more appreciated in his Possibly. death. Yeah, yeah, because he was... Really overlooked. Well, I would say he was ahead of his time. Yeah. I think guys like he was also difficult to work with. You were so most people, most talented people are. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, you know, I've been more difficult to work with as time has gone on because you become more specific about your skills. So well, like you also realize your self worth. Yeah, that's what I mean. Same right. thing. Like, it's no longer you're lucky to. I'm lucky to be here. It's uh, you're lucky to have me. Sometimes. I'm appreciative and I'm respectful, but there's also moments of like, well, I don't want to get stepped on anymore. I'm tired of that shit. Like, you get sick of kind of being put in a place of oh, like, yeah, you don't, you're lucky to be here. And you're like, no, fuck you. you. I could go do other shit. I'm planning a Burning All Bridges tour. Like, I'm Are like, you? when That's I'm smart. done, I'm like, here you go. Here I you actually go. said, I was like, you know, it'd be great as if I just closed, every, if I just started every party, was like, hey, I'm just going to do stand up for 10 minutes. I'm just going to ruin the entire night for everyone. <laughs> just fuck it That's up. That's it. Do snow, do improv. That'll really just fuck like, it up. Just like, oh, yeah. Get a couple of people in there. I'll get a few shot. Nothing worse than drunk improv. Right. Well, you think it's hilarious <laughs> and everyone's shit. just standing there like, what? Long is form. This? Yeah. Um, when you, this is the one thing I want to I touch on because yeah, I'm yeah. very curious. And you can pass, you can pass on the buck if you don't want to talk about it. But you have a girlfriend. You yeah. put her on the internet. You guys are, yeah. you guys are public about it. Yeah. Right. Like me, I'm pretty private with my personal life. 
I to the fans, they know my wife is the old bag. I call her the old bag. That's kind of the mm. only thing they know about her, you know, is like she's this mysterious creature. And that's put that way on, a, on purpose. Some people decide to put them, put their family in or out relationships or husbands, wives, kids, whatever. You live in the business of partying and women and all that shit. Right. Her comfort level. What is it? It's pretty high. She's older than me. She's a year older than me. She's kind of seen it all. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making excuses. It, she's pretty... Literally in our three years, she's might have had like three things to be like, hey, like, can you not spit in a girl's mouth? That's like one thing I don't want. Oh, but, see, my old bag would love that. She should be like, yeah, spit on those bitches. Oh, no. She's like, she's like, that's too personal. That's what, like what I like. Like, you know what I mean? She's like, don't. That's what you do to me. Yeah. She's right. like, that's for me. Yeah, uh, I get that. I, I get that. that. But uh, yeah, no real issue. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, I try to be respectful. I mean, it's, you know, especially in this day and age, I can't, you know. The well, Me Too movement, I try not to even fucking... I hand the bottles off to as many people as I can. I was just going to say, how much I has that I have so changed? many girlfriends at every party that I know because I've been doing this for 10 years at every city. Like, girls will come around and be like, can I spray champagne on her? And be like, be my guest. Yeah, oh, do The it. less work I get to do... I'll take photos with fans. You go fuck it. They want to see that anyways. Two girls having fun with champagne. Sure. So my fat ass doing it. So does she... So does she? has she ever been to yeah. a party with you? Yeah, yeah, she's come out. Did you meet her at a party? Dude, I booked her 90s man for camp without realizing. And then we just started talking, and then that's it. For the first camp? For that my you first did. camp ever. Oh, yeah. wow. And then yeah. you stuck. Yeah, and then she's like, slid in my DMs. She's like, You're all right. She's like, Hey, okay. I don't know. I don't maybe Take she Take this strong. goofy Russian Jew from Jersey. I, what is I, she? I grow up. Is she people. a Jersey kid too? She's Long Island. Like, oh, thick boy. Long Island. Like, Two Marissa different worlds. Tomei, Long Island. <laughs> this is a TV yeah. show. She's from Long Island. Yeah. He's she's... a Russian Jew from Jersey. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they met. <laughs> yeah, and... but like you said, like, you keep your shit very. I've, like, I, I've, I've learned that A, it's good for business to say I have a girlfriend. Sure. Because it A, Makes me less creepy. I was just I gonna do. say that's gotta help girls' comfortability levels. Comfortable knowing that it's like I'm not this weirdo. And more girls will come up to me and be like, um, "Is Este coming tonight?" Because they became fans of her. Because they're like, "Oh, this is like a strong chick that puts up with his shit," and we just have fun. Like, what's it's 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 she's really good for what I'm doing. Yeah, it's dope. But you do know you you're aware of the fact that. So many other women would be like, ah, I'm not fucking with that. That's insane. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to do that. So it's all like, my that's what's wonderful that yeah. she's cool with it because they're all cool. Yeah. Until they're not. So mm. who knows? I'm just telling you. You like, know now. All, I don't. You know about right now. Right now. Yeah, I live in the saying. moment. Yeah. Like, hey, six years ago, my ex was really cool too. Right. Until five and a half years. And then ago. she was like, and then it was, I'm enough of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the breaking point for most of these women was, the, Three was years. what you do. Three years is usually my But it's three life. years because of what you do, I'm saying? Is that the breaking point or is it because of something? Well, else? yeah, I was also a piece of shit. Sure, of sure. It's hard, you know? Life is hard. Yeah. Life is hard. You're being a good boy. It gets boy. lonely on the road. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. good now. Yeah, you're being good now. I have to be an adult now. You got to grow up, you feel like? Yeah. You got to be a guy who gets married and yeah, does all that bullshit? I can't relate to a 21-year-old anymore. No. Could you ever? Even, Did you dude, when you I were 21? I just found out what a finsta was. A what? A finsta. Here we are. Do uh, you know? No. I've heard people talk. Girls are like, oh my God, you have a Finsta? I'm like, is that like a, a fake cool? Instagram? Yes. It's where you, let's just say, stalk, you just have an anonymous account. A lot of celebs will do it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I like, where there's like people one. will like, old Slow Whisper right. account, I'd have like huge athletes come up and be like, girl, I love your shit. And I'm like, you don't follow me. And they're like, I I'm do. Like, you. they know. There's like 40 accounts, you know. Yeah, the fake Instagram. I, I have a good friend of mine who has like 20 million. On regular, on her public phony Instagram, on her like corporate, right, and then and her real like, one is like sixty people or something. Yeah, shit like that. and she's it always just blows being my a fucking dirtbag. Yeah, it's that. awesome. It's just actually sending wonderful. your racist memes. Like, yep, uh. yep, yep. It is so funny to see what goes on there versus what goes on the other one. You're always like, and then, like public they, image. You're and like, sometimes they post things at the same day, at the yeah. same time, and you're like, this was for the that was for my makeup line. This is for my <laughs> yeah, this is for my clan meeting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Got my hood washed, you know? Oh, my God. Uh, it is fun to see that kind of shit. Well, that's good, though. You got a good one, man. You hold on to her until fucking she uh, gets ready. She gets crazy. Yeah, until she loses it on you and finds out that she wants something else. They but whatever, do. man. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's hard. Is it hard having uh, a wife in comedy? No, dude. Honestly, it's the opposite. I, I think it keeps. It, I think. Do you think it's easier than it used to be? This whole world makes comedy more accessible without having a. I mean, obviously the road life and you still got to do stand up, but like 
podcasting really opened up an avenue for comedians, A, to make a shit ton of money yeah. and speak to an audience without having to go to their town. This is great because I don't have, I'm not filtered. I can do what I want. I can I can talk to people who I fucking like right, who I'm right, interested right. in. Like there there isn't there isn't a um there isn't a this is not a job I don't I uh, that I I'm bummed about doing, right? For a long time, like we have to do gigs that we're bummed about doing. A lot of comedy is like, I don't want to go to that city. I don't want to play that fucking right. club. I don't want to like this is something you want to do. This is the gig do. I I want to You don't to have do to be this. miserable to be a comedian. Yeah, like no. they said you have to be. Nah, it's bullshit. You can be damaged, past. but now yeah. you don't have to be miserable. We're all fucked up. We're all fucked up. I realized up. you didn't have to do it when I heard that back in the day Jim Brewer made serious build a studio in his house in Jersey so he could be with his family and still do his radio show. Hundred percent. And I was like, you know what? That's fucking dope. Yeah. That, like it's cool to see someone be able to balance it without it being toxic like I it's look it's hard there's no doubt but right. but the old bag isn't a part of the business which is great like i would never there's a good comic friend of Have mine you ever I, dated a comedian no dude no my buddy al magical says uh there's one headshot per household that's his rule it's like fuck that shit one headshot per household dude that, when that mean? one headshot per household oh, one, one, one headshot one headshot per household like uh-huh. two actors together fucking bullshit wow. it's never a real thing like two two people that is do there the anything same. worse two actors no 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 two, no, uh, no 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 oh. then like uh like a, uh, like I couldn't imagine um, being married to a female comic. I would argue, no matter who you are, no matter what job you do around this fucking world, if your significant other does the same thing, that relationship is doomed. I don't care what business is. I don't care what industry. Because there's, there's got to be resentment and jokes 100%. and success. 100%. And then it becomes like, oh, well, it's because of this and because of that. And there's no more validity of, hey, maybe I'm just writing better, better material. Right. See, that's tough because relationships are you all about. You can't tell your wife, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just better at this than yeah, you. Yeah, bitch, I'm stronger than you. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens. And by the way, look at those guys that are successful. Look at like the acting world of that. Like uh, Chris Pratt was married to what's her name? They're, and and uh-huh. she was more famous than him. And then the moment he got famous, famous, he was like, I got a rock, dude. I'm and out. And she's awesome. What was her name? Anna uh, Ferris. Anna Ferris. She's so funny. Right. She's dope. But he got famous. He wasn't famous. He was the fat guy in Parks and Rec. And then he got famous. Right. And when he got and famous, he, he was out. like, bye. I He's got like, I got to start fucking real famous pussy. <laughs> yeah, dude. He yeah. got out. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, those things, it's, when you do the same thing, the competition is too rich. There's no way. You, you Lucy and Ricky. Shit. Perfect example. Yeah, it bro. work. It was insane. And yeah. and and they and even their TV relationship was a mock up of what was going on. Yeah, it was fucking Come wild. On, um, dude, thank you. I uh, I appreciate you coming through. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm going I'm to put all your shit down here. I boring as shit. I don't know what I just You said everything great. It was wonderful. Yeah, we loved it. Did you like it, bro? <laughs> I wish we could have cut away to him going, yeah, it was good. It was, it was fucking fine. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to put all your shit in the description below. I'm going to put uh, ways that people can find you. The camp is so dope. I think that's phenomenal. You do it from May to what? No, I, what is it's it? only one weekend. I only do Oh, it's one weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Father's Day weekend. Hilarious. Which, ironically, most of the people who are attending yeah. probably don't have one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. Uh, it's carillscamp.com. Okay, that's great. where tickets are. I think it's still at like the second tier. Are of you tickets. touring right now? I don't have like a real right, like, but are you people going just out? call and they're like, "You want to come get drunk here for some money?" And you're like, eh, all right. Do you let's line go. up dates way in advance? Yeah, yeah, I I do, but I'm like the last minute kid too. Like a lot of clubs love bringing me in when I I help clubs pull out of a slump. I'm I, I've been known for <laughs> the that. Fixer. Right when the club's doing great, they're like, "What do we need Kirill for? It's fucking cranking, right?" Like, all right, and then the club starts like going a little down. They're like, "Bring in Kirill, like because what I'll do is I pull out people." From the under the rocks, right? Who've never been to this nightclub, and they're like, "Oh, I'll go see what Kirill's up to." And so the club just gains like a new fan base because they're like, they're like, we've like every club I've go to, they're like, we've never seen these people before in our lives. <laughs> they're like, <"Who, laughs> where did you find these people? They're like, from? they're like, they're like, they're like, I've been doing parties in this town for twenty years. So they're like, Kirill, who? Like I didn't know they lived. You bring here. them out of the woodwork. Yeah, there's like people just show up, and it's the best. It's just characters. Yeah. I love characters. When people are like, "I'm not, I'm too ugly to get into your parties," I'm like, "Please, come. please like, come I don't care. Right? Like that's why we have alcohol. Right. I'm ugly too. Like, <laughs> what do you? This isn't like that. Should be the tour. I'm ugly too. I'm, yeah, ugly, I'm ugly too. too tour. Yeah. Oh, I my the name of this tour that I tried to like basically called is like I'm gonna kill myself if nobody shows up. Like this is just that's <laughs> it. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm gonna sure the threaten my fans like, into coming. Like, you want to lose this? Yeah. Show I just them. bought a gun. Just post that shit on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, just like, <laughs> oh, come do some shots. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll post that in the, I'll post that in the description so you guys can see where he is next. I highly recommend it. Follow him online. He has great fucking content. He's a good dude. I like him a lot. He's a friend of the family. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey.